Hello everyone, this is Jack from Dr. Precept. If your car is having the check hybrid system lights or the triangle of death lights on with the leasing battery, then this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step procedure on how to find out the root cause and get your Prius back on the road. So stay tuned. This is the tool required for this job. First, you need to have a Dr. Priest app installed on your cell phone or your tablet. The only thing you need is the battery monitor page. Therefore, it's completely free. You don't need to pay for any license fee. Second, you need to have a compatible OBD2 adapter to connect to your car. I will put a list of compatible adapter in the description below. And third, you need to have a voltmeter that can read at least four digits of the voltage. And last, you need to have 8, 10, 12, 40 millimeter socket wrench, or if you prefer a power tool. First thing you need to do is stop driving the car. If you keep resetting the error and hope the car will back in normal, then it's not going to happen and you could damage the battery in the process. So stop driving the car, park in your driveway or somewhere in your garage and start doing the troubleshooting. And the first thing you need to check is to bring out your voltmeter, check on the 12 volt battery. Usually your car is in dormant or your car has been storage for a long time. So the 12 volt voltage is not good. The 12 volt battery is located at the right side of the trunk. If it's lower than 12 volts, then there should there could be all kind of error code throwing at you. So check 12 volt battery. Make sure it, the voltage at between 12 to 13 volts when the car is not running. Once you make sure the 12 volt battery is good, now it's time to take out the service plug and take out the metal case for the main battery. And what you need to do is check all the M8 bolts in there for the terminal to make sure nothing's missing or nothing's loose. 90% of the time, the buyer forgot to put the M8 bolts back in there securely. Therefore, it's causing high resistance and causing the error code. So that's the next step, next thing we're gonna check. Take out the seat. There's a Once you have the metal case taken out, it's time to check the bolt. And I apologize, this is the prototype for the next version, so it's a mess right now. Um, but what you need to do is take out the uh, the cover. All right. And what I usually do is use a hand tool like this to go through each M8 bolt, make sure everything is tight. If you have a torque wrench, the torque spec is two. Uh, two pound feet of torque. Oh, here we go. See, this one is loose. When it's loose, the internal resistance will be much higher on this one, and it could be a it will be a voltage hike when you step on the brake or when you accelerate and causing the air cone. Okay, so now we found a problem but I want you to tighten it up and continue to check for all the other bolts. Okay, once you check that, make sure you check all the connectors. All right. So often time, when during the installation, someone drop a tool or something and short the circuit, it's gonna burn the circuit out, okay? That, that happened quite a few times already. So what you know, need to do is check all the connector carefully especially for the ECU it would be a good idea to take it out make sure nothing burnt you know that these are the temperature sensor make sure everything is good and no burn mark everywhere in the system good
All right, if everything check out okay so far, no bolts is missing or loose, then it could be the problem within the battery blade for the lithium. So what you need to do is drain the battery, drain the main battery. So basically, the lithium phosphate battery is a very interesting chemical. The voltage keeps the same at 3.2 or 3.3 volts. You will start seeing the voltage drop when you drain the battery to below 3.1 volts per, per cell. Uh, so that's the time that you will see one particular blade has a much lower voltage than the others. And this is the time you take out the Dr. Precept so that you can monitor the, the battery situation. All right, so we have the car fire out and warm up. Um, so now it's time to run the Dr. Precept. All right, let's see. Um, okay, so as you can see, the voltage difference right now is only 0 0.0, so very minor. So, and the SOC, where is that? It's 60% state of charge. So what you need to do is turn on the AC and crank it up. Rear defroster. And you see the discharging now is start increasing. All right. And when this state of charge hit 40% or 41%, you want to stop the car and disconnect the 12-volt battery in the back, okay, for three minutes. That will reset this state of charge back to 60%. And doing that a couple of times will completely drain the main battery. Once the SOC hit 40%, you want to stop the car and disconnect the battery for three minutes. And it has been three minutes, so let's connect the battery back. Fire the car. And you can see state of charge back to 60%. So sometimes you have to do it multiple times, right? Let it drop to 40%, turn off the car, reset the turbo battery, and then repeat. All right, folks. So in this portal pie pack, I put in a back blade in there to do the video. And as you can see, we still have 47 state of charge. Uh, and the voltage difference already at 1.12 volts. That's the voltage dip I was talking about, right? See, all the other has a uniform voltage except that one. So that's the problem that you need to fix. So to fix that, you have to take out the blade, contact us at nextpowerenergy.com, ship it back to us, and we'll do an inspection, repair, and then send it back to you right away. See? SOG suddenly dropped to 24% because the car detects a problem. It's way too big. So one, two, three, four, five. This is number five. So when you look at the battery, starting from the left side, one, two, three, four, five. This one will be the one. All right, so you have to take it out or measure the voltage again with your voltmeter, make sure that's the one and take it out and send it back to us. We'll get it replaced and send a new one back to you. And that's it for now, folks. I hope you like the content. I hope my tip and trip help you troubleshoot the issue and get your car back on the road. So if you like the content, hit that subscribe. We'll continue pumping out the uh, repair shop series like this. Uh, to help you. I right, thank you guys for watching. I see you at the next one.